Hi there, my name's Tim and welcome back to the AV.com YouTube channel. Now I've got some news for you. My man cave is under threat. That's right, back at home I'm being relegated to a smaller room and my hi-fi separate system needs to downsize to some degree. So I began looking at what options there are out there and actually there's quite a few in this space. The most drastic option if you want to reduce box count, cables and footprint needed in your house is to look at an all-in-one hi-fi system. Now what is an all-in-one hi-fi system? Well, it's exactly what it says on the tin. It takes each of the components of a normal hi-fi separate system and puts them into one box. That means all you need is one plug socket and a flat surface, and you're basically ready to go. And that is really appealing. Perhaps like me, you're looking to downsize a hi-fi system, or maybe you're just looking for a system in another room, or maybe you've had a wireless speaker or a Bluetooth speaker and you're looking at taking things to the next level. This video should be of interest to you. Now I've picked three all-in-one hi-fi systems that are available right now on AV.com. Now this isn't an exhaustive list, but these are three units that are in a similar price bracket and also very popular with our customers on AV.com. So let me introduce you now to the lineup. First up, we have the name Muso 2. Now you can't talk about all-in-one hi-fi systems without looking at the name Muso 2. The Muso 1 came out in 2014 and this Muso 2 version came out in 2019, which means the unit's been around for almost a decade and units only stay in the market when they're exceptionally good. This is a beautiful design. You've got the mirrored bottom, you've got the aluminium chassis and the grille around the back, all elements that are absolutely stunning. And the star of the show is the rotary dial on the top, which if I had to sum up in a word, would be delightful. It's absolutely gorgeous proximity sensor as you approach it and gorgeous styling. Around the front, we've got six drivers, all powered by an individual Class D amplifier, which is 75 watts per driver. So there's a combined 450 watts of power with this unit. Control comes in the form of the aforementioned dial, or there is actually a remote control, which is very handy and supplied by name. In addition, there is a beautiful name app and it's important to note that other name wireless units are controlled using the same app. So if you have name system, you can control them all. Connections, there is a three and a half mil auxiliary input, there's an optical input, and there's an HDMI input, which means you can integrate this system with a TV and use it as a soundbar as well as a music system. Finishing that off, there's a type A USB connection. Next up, we've got the Technix SC C70 Mark II unit. Now, Technics are a Japanese company that was founded in 1965. So there's 59 years of pedigree with this company. This unit has a beautiful aluminium top, and this is the silver version. There is an all black version that's also available. You'll also notice on the top here, a CD player. In terms of control, you've got the remote control supplied by Technics, and there is an excellent Technics app, which gives you control of pretty much every feature the, the unit can do. In terms of drivers on the front, we've got two mid base drivers and two tweeters that are front firing. And on the bottom, there's actually a 12 centimetre subwoofer driver, which pro provides plenty of base. They combine to make 100 watts of power in this unit. Connections wise, we've got the three and a half mil headphone output on the front. We've got a three and a half mil auxiliary input on the back, an optical input and a type A USB. And I must mention on the front, there's an OLED display, which is really quite handy for giving you information on what you're hearing and what you're listening to. Finishing up the lineup is the fantastic Ruark R410. Now this is the walnut finish. This unit does come in a gray finish as well. It has a beautiful aesthetic. The grill on the front is made of sustainable wood and there's a beautiful TFT screen on the front as well that shows you what's going on. Control of this unit, you've got the roto dial on the top, which is really easy to use and has all the features. And instead of an app, Ruark actually produced a remote control, which replicates the roto dial on the top. So once you've got used to one, you've got used to the other. In terms of drivers, there's four drivers in the unit, two tweeters and two NS Plus mid bass drivers. And they're actually the biggest drivers that Ruark have used in a unit. Connections wise, you're really well sorted out here with this unit. You've got a subwoofer out if you want to expand the system and there's an RCA input for the turntable. There's also an RCA auxiliary input, USB and an optical. Finishing up, there's an HDMI eARC connection which will allow you to connect it to a TV and your TV's remote control will take over the basic functions of the unit and that will mean it can operate like a soundbar. So there we are, you've completed the lineup, but now we want to know where are they similar and where do they differ? Let's delve into it now. So here I have all three units in front of me. 
And I think it makes sense to start by looking at the similarities across these three units because they share a lot of features. Kicking that off is AirPlay and Chromecast. And by default, that means they all have multi-room capability via those protocols. In addition, there's Spotify Connect, which as the largest streaming service out there is news to most people's ears. They all have Bluetooth, but shout to the Ruark, which actually has Aptek HD, which is a higher quality version of Bluetooth. Remote control for all units is provided, but again, shouts to Ruark because I feel like the Rotodial remote control is the best one there is. They all share internet radio of some description, so you can listen to radio stations from across the globe. And finally, local area network streaming is supported on all three units. So if your music's on a NAS driver on a computer, no problem playing them on all three. So now I've got all three units in front of me and we've covered off the similarities. And it's fair to say with that list of similarities that any digital music you throw at these units, they will play them. So it's important now to look at some of the differences between the units and maybe we can help you decide which one is your preference. First feature I'd like to take a look at is app control. Now the name and the techniques do have an excellent app which has full control of all of the features. Now given that predominantly you're going to use these units for streaming, I think it's fair to say you're likely to have a digital unit in front of you and therefore an app makes total sense. In addition, you might like the tweakability that the app gives you, like there's placement settings in both of these units and the Technics even has an auto calibration that you can control from the app. Now the Ruark is the most recent unit and actually the only one that doesn't have an app. Now is that important? I would argue I can see the sense in their approach because AirPlay and Chromecast and Spotify Connect are kind of replacing the need for a control app and therefore you can get to your music in a really fast way. And given that all these units have convenience at their core, there is an argument for that approach. I guess it's up to you to decide if that's important or not. So the next feature I'd like to call out is on-screen displays. Now, as to whether these are important is, again, over to you and personal preference. The Ruark has a beautiful TFT screen, which I personally love. And the reason I love it is because it helps me remember my analog days and blurs the line between analog and digital. So some of you will remember these things, and there you have it displayed on the front screen as well, which I really like. And screens can be really important as well because they give you information about the signal you're actually sending so you can make sure that you're hearing what you intend to hear. The Technics actually features a smaller OLED screen, which is not as graphical as the Ruark, but is very functional. And the name has chosen not to have a screen, and that means that it's the most sleek, I guess, in terms of design. Some people find screens distracting, other people will like them the way I do. Next up, I want to talk about CD player. Now, the Technics is the only unit that can do it. Now, for some of our audience at this point, they'll be wondering what we're talking about. This is a compact disc, and the Technics is the only player of the three that can play them. Now, if you've got a huge CD collection, then that's going to be really important to you. And another feature I'd like to highlight is radio. Now, all three, as I've already mentioned, do internet radio but the Technics and the Ruark do have a DAB and FM traditional tuner. And again, if you enjoy those methods of listening, then that's really important to know. The name relies solely on internet radio. Now I mentioned this earlier, which is HDMI connections, but it is an important distinction between the two. The name Muso has an HDMI ARC connection and the Ruark, perhaps because it's slightly newer, has an eARC connection via HDMI. Now that could be really important if you're looking to place these units under your TV and then they can help enhance your TV listening as well as being an awesome music system. Now the Technics doesn't have an HDMI connection but it does have optical in as do all three. So there is a way of connecting your TV to it. But I think it's important to note that these two with HDMI mean that the TV's remote control will take over control. And that means that it's a much easier experience when combining with a TV. So let's talk connections. In some way, I don't see this as make or break. These are all in one systems and therefore can just be used as standalone units. But you never know what direction you may want to go in in the future. So having the ability to add components might be important. In that regard, the Ruark R410 has more options. It has a subwoofer out and it has an RCA line in and turntable input, which could be a really nice option moving forward. 
Both the Technics and the Muso can be added to. They both have a 3.5mm auxiliary input and they both have an optical input. So there are options there. On the Muso, it's slightly tucked away and a bit more awkward to get to, but you can do it. And interestingly, the Technics is the only one with a headphone output, which may be important to you. So we've looked at similarities and we've looked at some differences. And I'll be honest, a lot of those differences are pretty personal as to your usage and whether they're important. And I can feel the whole internet at this point screaming at this video, how do they sound? And I get that. When you're compar comparing units, then sound is the most important factor. However, talking about sound is really difficult because it's incredibly subjective. All I can do is give you my opinion on the units. Now, some background on what I decided to do. I listened on Spotify Connect so that I could guarantee the same signal to all the units. I also turned off all of the EQ settings in all of the units so that I could hear them as flat as possible. And here are my findings. Let's start with the Technics unit. Now the Technics has a really bold and energetic presentation. And of the three units, it definitely has the most extended bass, perhaps due to the larger bass driver on the bottom of the unit. This is particularly apparent with the Tiesto dance track. That bass is really full and fun. And I would say if you like a lot of high impact music, then the Technics should be on your shortlist. The name has a different character altogether, but it's very name. It's got that sonic character that name is known for. And of particular highlight is the vocal presentation. So when listening to the Teddy Swims track, I felt that you could understand the detail a little bit better on the name than perhaps the Ruark unit. That was particularly apparent as the track got going. I felt that the various layers of the music was all handled better on the name than perhaps the Ruark. However, what I would say is when we looked at the waste track, which is a bit more stripped back and a bit more acoustic, I found that that really shone on the Ruark. That's where it's really at home. So if you listen to a lot of acoustic and, and folk related music, then the Ruark should be on the shortlist too. In terms of bass, the Ruark is slightly more leaner than the name. And in terms of treble, the Ruark is definitely quite forward without being bright, and I think Ruark have definitely made this unit have a bit more life than some of their previous units. Now, given the popularity in podcasts these days, and given that all three units are a radio unit, then I thought it was important to give a little bit of a test to spoken word. So I picked a podcast again on Spotify and played it all three. To be honest, not much to note there. They all sound really crystal clear and dynamic. Perhaps the Muso, that vocal presentation, just slightly sweeter, but not much in it. And at this point, I just want to talk about power. Now, on a spec sheet, there's quite a huge difference. We've got 100 watts and 120 watts and 450 watts. But I wouldn't get too hung up on that because in real world usage, they all went plenty loud enough. And yes, there's a bit of a degradation as you go to the real high volumes, but, but nothing of note. So I feel that on paper, it's probably bigger than it is in reality. So there we have it, three beautiful all-in-one hi-fi units. And it's really encouraging to see such quality units in this space because an all-in-one unit is very easy to use and will get a lot of people listening to music and I'm all in favor of that. Quick note about the Technics, which actually has a couple of features the others don't in the CD player and the also calibration. And at the time of shooting this video is actually the most wallet friendly of the three and also has the smallest footprint. So will take up the smallest room in your house. All three units are beautiful to look at. It's very subjective as to which one you would like. I think for me, the Ruark just steps that aesthetic forward and to a new level, which I really like. And they handle everything the modern streaming world can throw at them and more. They're really easy to work with. They sound great. They look great. And I would be quite happy recommending any of these three to any of our customers that came to our showroom. So I kicked off this video saying that I needed to downsize my stereo separate system and look at all in one. So how do they compare? Well, they don't really. In fairness, the speakers in these units are quite close together and they can't quite replicate a true stereo separate system. However, when you've used these units for a while like I have, and that comparison starts to drift away, you're left with a really pleasant unit. And let's have it right, these units just require a flat surface and one plug socket. So there's no rack, no cables, and no real fuss. And that is really appealing. 
If you're after the very last ounce of detail, then I would take the budget used on these and I would look at a stereo separate system. However, if you're after convenience, ease of use, then any of these units are very recommended. And I think that about wraps up this video. As always, if you want to find out more about these products, then they're available right now on av.com. Our experts are on hand at the end of a phone if you want to find out anything more. As is cliche these days, give us a thumbs up and a subscribe if you like this video and any questions we didn't quite cover off, pop them in the comments box below and we'll answer them as soon as we can. And our world-class showroom is available if you want to come and hear these units. So that's about everything and until next time, keep on grooving.